Disneyland is your land. <laughs> Come seek an adventure at the old pirates, eh? Make the jump to light speed. to the Disneyland beat where our toes tap to a Disneyland drum. And we always whistle while we work. Hi, I'm Amy. And I'm TC. You know, there's been a lot of buzz about Disneyland Forward. An environmental impact study was just released from the city of Anaheim about the proposed expansions. There is not too much new that we see from previous information shared with citizens. The park wants to expand into land it already owns, but is currently zoned for parking, which should see expansion of both parks and a separate downtown Disney-like area at the current Toy Story parking lots. We saw some reports saying that Disney is definitely building a third gate, meaning another park, but we haven't seen any direct evidence of that. We think people are just pointing out that Disney does have a whole lot more space west of the park than they previously had thought of, and that there's technically enough room to do it. Anything is possible, of course, and a third gate is likely more profitable than just expanding the two parks as is. And the environmental impact report is technically written and thousands of pages long, so we don't know what else is in there yet. There was some clear information though, Disney will need to build berms or walls to try and keep sounds from affecting nearby neighborhoods, and they may be restricted on how close or how tall some attractions may be to the borders. There was a very interesting document included in the report that showed the volume levels of different areas of the resort. Our untrained eyes saw Tomorrowland as the loudest area, but it's also near the interstate, so maybe that works. Avengers Campus and Pixar Pier were the loud spots at DCA. The plans show Disney ringing the new areas with show buildings and keeping the noise toward the center of the proposed additions. This really does make sense. Think of Cars Land. It looks amazing from every viewpoint inside the land surrounded by buildings. But it is worth noting that outside of the land, the view isn't quite so exciting. Same thing at Galaxy's Edge. Disney did raise a stir by pointing out that they may build in transportation infrastructure, such as the Skyliner and wait for it, People Mover. Much like the vague concept art that has been showing, this could mean anything. Disney has continued to point to expansions in international parks being built right now, such as the new Frozen Land, Zootopia, and the new Fantasy Springs, all of which have a lot to offer. No concrete information has been released about anything yet, but it's nice to dream about new lands and expansion at Disneyland. Crowds at Disneyland have been heavier this past week as we get closer to the penultimate night of the Halloween season. Security lines in the evenings in particular have seemed long. Ride times have been fairly reasonable though, and mornings have been particularly light with so many guests staying up late to enjoy the spooky park scenery. Friday and Saturday nights have gotten quite busy though. Fresh on the heels of San Francisco, we have had some more openings at the park, which are always exciting. Tiana's Palace has been open for a week or so now. It's been a big hit as far as we can tell. The overlay is gorgeous, adding a lot more saturated cool colors and popcorn lighting and really beautiful signage. As of the writing of this update, it has not popped up on mobile order yet like the Mint Julep Bar has. The lines have been long, but it seems like there are plenty of satisfied customers, plenty of blue skies and sunshine ahead. And most recently, the Avengers Vault, a small shop in the Avengers headquarters building has opened. Even though it's just a small shop, it's nice to have something more to do in this land if you happen to walk through when no interactive characters are out. It doesn't really have any new merch that we saw, but there is so much Marvel merch out there already. It's actually nice to have it broken up into a bunch of smaller shops instead of seeing it all at once at the Avengers Superstore. Eventually, the shop is meant to be the exit gift shop for a new attraction, one that should happen someday. Let's put a number on it. We're gonna guess 2026 or 2027 for that one to open. Any guesses from our viewers? Let us know in the comments. Imagineers showed some concept art featuring the ride vehicle at the recent D23 event, at least to let us know that they're still thinking about it. Overall, Disneyland was snubbed at the event in our opinion, but that's neither here nor there. We will say it's really cool to be able to walk underneath the Quinjet. We might see some new characters at the park soon. Disneyland put out casting calls for characters from Turning Red, including Panda Mei Ling and the Four Town Band. A Four Town stage show at the Tomorrowland stage with a panda visit would be really cool. Also, we've been expecting to see Joe Gardner playing piano as part of the Rivers of America jazz show currently running in place of Fantasmic. If you're already missing the limited run show at the Hyperion Theater, Rogers the Musical, there's some good news for you. As of this weekend, there's a cast recording of the music that is now available on all major your streaming platforms. So if you're feeling inspired to choreograph your own production of Save the City, you've got the music, 
Now you just have to assemble your team of Avengers. Fire has returned to DCA. World of Color 1, which uses a lot of flame effects at key moments in the show, suspended all fire effects when the phantasmic Draken fire happened. September 8th, Disney returned flame effects to the DCA Nighttime Spectacular. Halloween Screams has still been operating without them. Alcohol being available at Disneyland table service restaurants? It's on. There's a pretty good variety from what we can see. Carnation Cafe has beer, wine, a Bloody Mary, and a peach pie margarita, as well as champagne and mimosas with breakfast. Riverbell Terrace also has a couple of beers, wines, and offers a wild berry mule. Cafe Orleans has a few beers and wines and a house hurricane cocktail. Blue Bayou offers a hurricane cocktail too, and it has a much more extensive wine selection in addition to a couple of beers. The Magic Happens Parade will end its run October 15th, though we think they should extend it a couple weeks. A Christmas fantasy parade will be starting with the holiday season, but not until November 11th. Expect some additional cavalcades in the meantime. Magic Happens will likely return, or at least we hope it does. We think it's been a very successful parade that fits our intimate little park really well. Well done, Magic Happens cast. One thing that is promising is the amount of work being done in general around the park at a time not typically set aside for general maintenance. It's a shame it points to aging infrastructure and disrepair for a lot of the construction that seems to be happening. So expect to see a fair share on construction walls and a few attraction closures. The Adventureland Treehouse still has not opened. It's looking great as far as we can tell and we can't wait for it to open. This project is now up there with some of the longest Disneyland attraction projects in its history. They built Disneyland itself, the Matterhorn, Toontown, and Galaxy's Edge in shorter periods of time. Tiana's Bayou Adventure does not look much different than it has for several weeks now. The project, which will continue for the next year at least, will eventually become more interesting to follow. Right now, it looks like demolition and infrastructure installment time, and it'll be several weeks before they start to rebuild and add elements. Schmoozies at DCA is currently closed, and it reopens on the 24th, and Golden Horseshoe at Disneyland is closed through the 30th of this month. As far as attractions go, the biggie is Space Mountain, which is closed through October 25th, reopening on the 26th. But you'll also find the Golden Zephyr closed through the 28th of this month, and the Mark Twain Riverboat closed for an unannounced period of time. You'll find two walled areas in Mickey's Toontown opened earlier this year. First, Donald's Splash Pad has yet to open at all, and we wonder what the holdup is here. And Centennial Park around Walt's Wishing Tree is closed through October 22nd. This will be the second or third long closure of this area since it debuted. Chipping paint problems again is our guess here. Looking ahead to future closures, Goofy's Play Yard will close October 23rd for an undetermined amount of time. Some of its elements outside of the house, such as spinny cars and a seesaw, have already broken and been removed. And it too has a water feature that has never operated. The only other attraction closure that we can see coming up is the temporary closure of It's a Small World on October 23rd to get its visit from Santa Claus and its complete holiday overlay. Small World will return September 10th with the debut of the holiday season at Disneyland. Downtown Disney construction is moving kind of quickly compared to some of the park projects, actually. The structures on the west side of the district are taking shape. You can see where Ding Tai Fung is going to be and the new live entertainment stage as well, a long-needed upgrade. The new restaurants Paseo and Centrico, taking over Catal's and Uva Bar's old spots, do not seem to be moving as quickly. We would love to get opening dates for these new venues. However, downtown Disney is looking pretty good otherwise. Encanto and Coco scenes and topiaries have returned, themed for fall and Latin American Heritage Month. Pixar Place Hotel is getting closer. The new lobby looks really cool. To us, it seems inspired by the line work scene in Pixar's Soul. Colorful tiles and fun Pixar ball lamps are appearing on the outside paths. It's gonna be really cute. The rooftop pool, probably one of the best parts about staying here, looks cool and is nearly complete. The eating establishments are mostly still under construction though without opening dates announced. Be aware if you've got this hotel booked and be in contact with the hotel so you know what's going on. And at the Disneyland Hotel, the new villas are about to open their doors to guests later this month. DVC members are getting really excited. Well, that's it for us today. Thanks for joining us for another Disneyland update. Please smash that like button and subscribe if you're new. We've got lots more to come. May the light in the firehouse window always shine brightly. And may your dreams always come true. See you real soon, Mouseketeers. Back in time to the time of the world and the age of the dinosaurs before returning to Main Street Station. As we begin
begin our journey, remember that for a safe trip, you need to stay seated, keeping your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the train. And please watch your children. 